Hi there, this is a video that I had wished was on the internet when I started this project, so I tried to put one together in hopes that it might help other people. This is a Mitsubishi Mini Split behind us. Uh, this is the MSZ uh, FS09NA. That's a 9000 BTU uh, Mini Split. Um, these instructions should apply to any of the Mini Splits, I believe, in the FS series. Um, we also did a 18,000 BTU one, it was more or less the same. I suspect they're all more or less the same. Uh, the nature of the project was this mini split comes with a pretty nice remote control. Uh, it allows you to control the temperature, set a schedule, stuff like that. Um, but what we found was that in cold weather, we would set the temperature and it would never really hit that temperature. We would have to, like if we wanted the temperature at 66, we'd have to set the temperature on the, therm on the remote control to something like 74 or 76 in order to hit that 66 temperature. And you know what we had to set it to varied depending on what the temperature outside was and things like that. So that got old pretty fast. Um, part of the reason we thought that was because this unit has this IC, uh, here it is, IC sensor, which if you watch the promotional videos, looks all around your room and takes the temperature of everything. And we thought, oh great, it'll know what temperature the room is and therefore be able to regulate it. Uh, that didn't turn out to be the case. And from what I can tell, talking to professionals and reading up on the internet, it seems as though it determines the temperature it thinks the room's at just by the temperature of the returning air. But a lot of times these are up near the top of the room, uh, hot air rises, of course, and so they have an incorrect notion of what the room temperature is. And as far as I can tell, the little sensor, all it's really doing is detecting the presence or absence of humans. And there's even fine print about like, and if they're wearing a lot of clothes, it may not even detect them. So um, that turned out not to be as big of a win as we thought. Uh, what we really wanted was something that could be down closer to where we live and say like, yeah, here's the temperature. Why don't you turn up the heat? And uh, on one of our units, we had some professionals install a thermostat. Uh, the unit that I'm going to be talking about today, the MHK2, is the way I refer to it. Um, I think it was a thermostat. It's technically billed as a remote controller. Um, we actually use them as a remote control. We didn't really want to mount them to walls, so we just set them on a shelf somewhere. And it basically reads the room temperature. If it's too cold, colder than you set it to, tells the thermostat to, or tells the mini split to start producing heat. Um, if it's too warm, it, it shuts down just like a normal thermostat. Um, this turned out to be a pretty easy project to do. Uh, if you are at least somewhat handy and not scared of taking things apart a little bit, something you can do. As far as equipment, all you really need is a Phillips head screwdriver. Um, I used a knife to cut through some of the tape on some of the boxes and, and battery packs and stuff, but really uh, pretty easy. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is walk you through what I learned about how to do this um, or figured out on myself, on my own. A um, Couple things before you try this. Uh, first of all, I'm not a Mitsubishi professional. You could probably tell. Uh, so, you know, don't take everything I say as gospel. It's worked for me. Um, it may not for you. You may also want to check with your installer to make sure that messing around with it like this doesn't void the uh, service contract you may have set up or something like that. Um, in our case, our installers were fine with us doing this, which is why we did it. I won't mention who they were. A um, couple other things. Uh, I told you why we wanted to do it. A couple reasons you may not want to make this change. Um, first of all, uh, these thermostats are a little bit expensive. So I think ours was $370 or thereabouts on Amazon. Um, for us, that was worth the pain of not having to manage the remote control all the time manually, but for other people that may be too much. Um, the thermostat has a lot of nice features and a really nice user interface. I like using it much better than the remote control. At the same time, I believe that uh, this unit has enough features that the thermostat can't control all of them. So for example, it does have features that control the uh, vertical tilt of these fins here but I haven't found a feature that controls the inside side to side tilt of the fins, which you can do with the remote control. Um, that's not a showstopper. You can use the remote control and the thermostat interchangeably. Uh, so you could use the remote control, for example, to set the fin angle um, side to side, and then uh, switch the remote controller, or sorry, switch to the thermostat to set the temperature. Uh, that should work fine. Uh, but you know, it's, it's a little too bad that you can't do every single thing on the thermostat. That said, we don't mess with some of those settings hardly ever, so it's not really a big deal for us. Um, once you get the thermostat set up, you're not gonna wanna put that 
uh, up against an exterior wall or in sunlight um, sort of makes sense, right? Anywhere that uh, it may not read the temperature of the room accurately because it's either getting heat or cold from outside or from the sunshine or whatever. So we just found out of the way shelves to put them on. We don't poke at it very often once we get the schedule set up and things are going well. Um, I guess that's all I can think of uh, that I wanted to say here at the outset. Um, big disclaimer, uh, again, I'm not a professional. Um, don't do this if you feel nervous about messing with things, uh, playing with electricity, stuff like that. I'll tell you how to do it safely, but uh, obviously all at your own risk, all right? Okay, so here's that unit that was behind me in the previous shot. It's up quite high in our kitchen, and for most of this video, I'm shooting it standing on the counter. This is the MHK2. If you buy it, uh, it comes in a box that looks like this. It's got the thermostat unit and the wireless thing that goes up in the mini split itself. Here I'm going to show when you open it up, there will be two boxes inside. The top one here is the MIFH2. This is the little wireless receiver that sits up in your mini split. And then here we've got the MRCH2. This is the actual thermostat. It'll sit down in your room. This is where I need a knife to uh, cut this open. Can't do much of this one-handed, although I did an amazing job for most of the video. All right, so here again, we see the unit. Right now you can see it's powered on. The little green light is on there. First thing I'm gonna do is turn it off with my remote control. Now, this is not gonna make it completely safe. Uh, this will just make it so it's not blowing hot air out at me as I'm working on it. Um, probably what you should really do at this point is go down to your circuit box turn off the circuit breaker that controls this. Typically it's on the same circuit as your external heat pump. Um, that's gonna be the very safest way to work on this whole thing so that there's no power going to the unit at all. Um, what I did was kept the power on for a little bit because I didn't want the rest of our house to get cold. And I'll come back in a little bit later in the video and show you where I did turn off the circuit uh, and turn it back on again, actually a couple of times, uh, just to make sure that I didn't electrocute myself or short out the unit itself. And here you can see it's going through its shutdown system, closing things off. Uh, again, the green light is still on. That means it is still receiving power from the main uh, circuit board. Um, again, the right thing to do here would be to shut off that circuit, uh, but most of this is gonna be pretty safe. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is pop off the uh, flap that hopefully you're opening and closing pretty frequently so that you can clean the filters that are within this unit. Basically, you're just going to grab the little side tabs, push them up, the whole thing swings up, and it'll just sit happily sticking straight out from the wall there. So the next thing we're going to do is pop that hood off completely. Um, this is a little scary the first time you do it. Uh, all this is plastic. You're worried about breaking things. I found it's pretty resilient. So you're just going to sort of grab here and sort of either pull it straight out or you can sort of torque it with your thumb. I didn't manage to do it in that shot. Um, you're gonna do that on both sides. <laughs> I had to set down the camera. And once you've done that, you basically can just pull that right off, set it down somewhere out of the way. And this is what your unit is gonna look like at that point. Uh, again, those blue things there are the filters that hopefully you're cleaning regularly. Over here on the right is where we're gonna be doing most of the work today. We're gonna to pop off this plastic case uh, and then get at some of the innards there. All right, so zooming in a little bit, um, we're going to take two screws off here off the face. These two that I'm pointing to here, they're just Phillips head screws. Uh, normal Phillips head screwdriver will take those off. We're also going to take off one down here at the bottom. It's well hidden. There's a little white tab here you can just sort of flick off. It's just in there through pressure and a little tiny snap. And there's a third Phillips head screwdriver there. Screw there we're going to have to take off. Once we take all three of those off, we can really start messing around with stuff. All right, uh, at this point I've taken all three off and basically what you're gonna do is pry this side. It's got just a plastic cover over the, over the whole thing. You're gonna pry it off. And this is kind of the trickiest part, particularly with that IC sensor there. Um, it's, it's underneath, so it's sticking through this cover. So I'm sort of carefully wiggling it. I think ultimately what I had to do is go up to the top, kind of pop the top off a little bit. Then the top swung down and just popped off over this IC center, sensor. Um, but it was, it was a little tricky to do with one hand while trying to film this, so this shot is kind of terrible. But you're basically just going to 
with two hands much more easily than I could. Grab it uh, wherever you can sort of get a hold on it. Again, pulling from the top, giving a little wiggles, uh, gently wiggling it off everything underneath. Uh, it's, it's, again, pretty resilient. I remember when my contractor was first working on one of these, he was just popping things left and right, and I was like, ah, you're going to break it. Uh, it's not, not that bad. And here you can see I finally kind of prized it off, swung it down. The IC sensor, as you can see, is still attached there at the bottom. So now what you can see is we've exposed these kind of metal-looking plastic plates. The power light's still there at the bottom, the IC sensor. And this IC sensor is kind of a, its own little piece. There's this black clasp here holding the top on. You can sort of use that to unclick it. Uh, there's also a little click at the bottom right. And uh, basically you can sort of take it off and it'll swing free. It's still connected with a wire and it will be for this whole project. Um, but that just made it easier for me to kind of work. And next we're gonna remove these screws here. Um, that's gonna release this, again, metal looking plastic plate that's on the right hand side there. And again, there's the sensor hanging free. All right, so here's how things look. Again, we've popped off that white plastic cover on the right-hand side, our IC sensor is hanging free, and we're about ready to take those screws off the next part. This is where I go down and power off the actual circuit board. So you can see that the green light went off when I did that. And that's because we're gonna be getting in close to some circuitry here, some wiring, and this is a place where I would not wanna get a shock or short the unit. All right, so again, looking down here, there are these two Phillips head screws here on the side. Those are holding that plate that I'm pointing to there in place. It looks like metal. I believe it's just plastic. Um, we're going to have to take off both of those screws. I was thinking I could get away with just doing one of them. I had forgotten that I needed both. So you're going to see a little bit of a video here where I take off one, try to get the cover off. Uh, turns out I can't. I need to take that other screw out. But this is sort of the idea of what's going to happen. We're going to sort of pry that loose and then slide it straight out uh, away from it. But unfortunately, because I didn't take that other screw out, I can't do it yet here. So let's take that other screw out. That one right there. Uh, I want to mention that these last two screws that I took out each have a very small washer on them. Do not lose that. Note that the original three did not have washers. So here's a look at that metal-like plate again. I'm going to show you the back here. There are these three white tabs that are kind of holding it in uh, in place. All right, so once we take those two screws off the front, we can then just lift this front plate off. You can see some exposed wiring there. That just basically almost falls right off. And then we've got the other plate here on the side, which again, we're gonna sort of slide straight out. It's a little bit tight in there. Those three tabs we saw are kind of holding it in place. I'm just gonna gently wiggle it free. Sorry about my camera shot here and then just slide it straight out like that. It's just mostly held in there by tension by those three white tabs we were talking about before. Set that down somewhere out of the way. And then if you look over here on the side, you can see this little circuit board. And this is where we're gonna actually attach the wireless controller right to that little red, um, I don't even know the technical term, red little socket for it to plug into. You can see the wires there that are routed around it. We're gonna route the wire of the controller around in the same way. I'll show that in a different shot in a little bit. All right, so it's time to go back to our uh, equipment here. We're gonna open up the box for the wireless controller. You find two things inside. One of them is the wireless receiver itself in this nice foam pack. The other is the cable here in the Ziploc bag. Sorry for my camera work. Um, so there you can see both pieces. I'm going to basically pull those out. Here we go. Got the wire coiled up there. It's got these little clips on both ends. Both sides seem to be the same as far as I can tell. And we're going to take one of those ends and just slot it right into the wireless receiver here. You can see one side's got a little tab sticking out. That's going to go in the bottom there where that slot is. So we're just going to gently slide it in there. Again, harder to do with one hand than with two. It's going to click right into place, and once it does, it'll be nice and flush there up against the side of the wireless receiver. I'll then undo that twisty tie. All right, so here we are. Uh, I've got the wireless receiver hooked into the cable. The other things in the other box, we've got some wall mounting stuff for the thermostat if you want to put it on your wall. There's a plate you can use to uh, snap it onto when it's on your wall. 
Uh, I'm not going to do that, as I mentioned. So then there's the thermostat itself and the batteries. Those are the things I'm going to be focused on in this video. All right, I've climbed back up on my counter. I've got the other side of the wire here. And again, we're going to click it right into that little red socket there. I spend most of this video trying to put it in backwards. Um, the tab on the clip should face outwards towards the room. Uh, I spent most of this clip trying to put it in backwards there. Uh, here I almost got it right. No, no, I'm going to go back to backwards again. Anyway, uh, just like the side that clipped into the wireless receiver itself, you're just going to gently push it in. It's going to slide right in and click in once you get it the right way. So again, with that tab facing out, here we go. Now I've got it. Push it in very gently, clicks right into place. Nice and snug there. All right, you can kind of see it clipped on. Now we're going to take the black wire here and we're going to route it kind of um, up and out of the way a little bit. Uh, so we don't, we're eventually going to have it come out the bottom here uh, where I'm just pointing right there. Now before we put things together, we want to test that things work. So I'm going to go down to the basement, flip the power back on, and uh, make sure that everything's working before reassembling things, just to avoid wasting time. So here we are uh, back at the thermostat. If we flip it over, there's a spot for two AA batteries. Those are included, happily. Put those in. And that should be enough to power up the thermostat. You see the Mitsubishi name there, and it says connect receiver. That's a good sign. So what we're gonna do is go up to the receiver, and it's got that little Looks like a U here in the picture. It's basically a little button you can push. Push that in and it starts blinking yellow, or maybe not blinking, solid yellow. That means it's ready to be set up. We come back to the thermostat. We're gonna hit select to say that we're ready to connect the receiver. I had to do it a couple times. There we go, connecting. Gives you a little 30 second countdown. If we pop back over and look at the receiver at this point, we can see it blinking green quickly. That's a good sign as well. It means they're establishing their connection. And then when that's through, we're back over at the thermostat. It says success. And we can click that little done button there. At this point, there is a bunch of setup stuff you can do. Um, and most of this is pretty technical and most of the defaults are just fine. So for the most part in this video, I'm just gonna flip right through it, uh, skipping over almost everything. You can choose Fahrenheit or Celsius. Uh, something about a heat pump system type. I did not do anything there. Most of these settings I'm not going to do anything about. And if you look in the manual, there's sort of a list of what all the settings are, what their defaults are, what you can set them to, things like that. This one says, what kind of schedule do you want to set up, like Monday through Friday, separately from Saturday, Sunday. Um, there's some things you can disable. This is one of the things I actually changed. Um, this says when you're setting a schedule, do you want to be able to set the ability to just turn off for certain periods of time? And I think that's pretty nice, so I went in and enabled that, um, but you may feel differently. And then I went back to skipping through most of the rest of the settings here. Uh, and again, there's a, there's a fine print table in the installation manual that tells you about all these settings. Well, barely. It tells you a little tiny bit about the settings, what the different options are, what the default is. <clears throat> Uh, I think the only other things I'm going to set here are there's basically a maximum temperature that the heat should be able to be set to and a minimum temperature that the cooling should be able to be set to. 85 seems high for heat where I live, uh, so I came in here, uh, it took me a little bit, I uh, have to hit edit, and then I came in here and said like, well, let's make the highest that heat can go to something more like 75 so people don't get crazy with it. Uh, hit done, and then there's a, if you're in air condition mode, what's the minimum temperature? That one I think I decided to leave as is, 61 seems pretty okay. Um, and then a bunch of other settings that I flipped through here. Things about the humidity, offset, and then you get to finish setup, hit done. It saves those settings. If you ever wanna go back and do those again, there's a four digit number on the back of the thermostat. If you add one, two, three, four, 1,234 to it, that'll be your pin. You can get back to that menu by holding down the menu button for five or 10 seconds. You enter that pin and you can do that again. 
Here I'm just setting the date. Uh, you'll also have the, uh, you can say whether or not to use daylight savings time here. I hit yes. I uh, say whether you want 12 hour, 24 hour clock. I pick 12. You can set the time here. I just skip past that because it's getting a little bit old. It saves that. Uh, again, you can change that through the menu, through the settings. All right, so uh, at this point, um, things are powered on. You can see that green blinking light there, slower now. And I'm then going to press that button one more time. The green light turns solid. And that sort of finishes the setup of the unit. Now at this point, I went back down to the basement, turned the circuit breaker back off again. You can see the green light is off there. That's why. Uh, and the reason is we're about to reassemble things. I'm going to get in near that circuit board again. I don't want to risk shorting anything out or zapping myself. But before reassembling, what we're going to need to do is route this black wire uh, to kind of keep it out of the way of the rest of the circuit board. And we're going to basically route it right around where I just pointed my finger, kind of on the outside here. There are these three black pieces that stick out. And we're going to just make the wire go around there, kind of hold it out of the way. You can see other wires are going through this same routing. And then down here at the bottom, we're going to sort of press it through. There's a little tiny gap there. Uh, I think I showed you that earlier when I was taking that panel off. That's going to be a spot where that wire can slide out uh, even after that panel has slid in over it. Basically, it's just kind of a gap there in the bottom. All right, and that panel's going to slide right in there next. Now you can see a couple of those three tabs that I've mentioned a few times here. We're basically just going to tuck the back of this panel right in there behind those tabs and right on top of, there's a little white spot there you can see it sort of rests on top of. Uh, you might need to go back and watch that a couple times. We're basically just going to gently angle it in there uh, and it's just going to slide right in. Those three tabs are going to hold in place. Our wire is sticking out the bottom there and uh, here you can see it's still sticking out a little bit. Here's another shot of that. Here you can see those three tabs holding the back in place. You can see the white part that it's kind of just sitting on top of there. I pull it out a little bit to just show how those tabs just apply some friction to keep it right in, in place here. Again, we're just going to gently slide it back in there. Uh, again, with two hands is easier than one. And once we do, that front is going to be nice and flush up against the front where we took those two screws out to begin with. So here you can see that nice flushness. We're going to replace those two screws. Um, but first, before we do that, we need to put that front panel back in place. So here I'm going to grab that, bring it up here. You can see that little rectangle on the left-hand side. There's a little slot that that slides right into, which I do a really poor job of showing in this video. But you can figure that out. And then you're going to put those two screws back in. Now, if I haven't made it clear before now, and I think I have, I am not a professional videographer. And one of the things I wanted to make really clear in this video was how that IC sensor snaps back into place. So I shot it three or four times, and uh, unfortunately I didn't realize my camera was in time-lapse mode, so it is completely not very useful. Uh, but I'm going to loop it here. If you're motion sick, you may just want to skip ahead. Um, essentially, two things are going to hold that back in place. It's been dangling by its wire this whole time. There's a little clip at the top, a little black clip I think it is, uh, that holds the top in. And then at the bottom in the back right, it sort of uh, sits right on top of something or sort of clips right into something. It's pretty tenuous, but once it's there, it's pretty solid. Um, anyway, if you go back and watch when I disconnected that, that may be the best way to sort that out. But uh, apologies that I didn't get better footage of that. All right, so now we're done mucking around with the electronics. So I'm going to power the circuit breaker back on again. You can see the green light is on there. Now we can come over here to the thermostat, and I'm going to turn it on just to see if it actually works. I turn on heat mode, uh, mess with the temperature a little bit, and uh, then if we go up and look at the unit itself, we can see it going through its power on. You can see the green light on on the right there, and as we wait here, we'll see the fin bottom fins already opened up, and now we see the front fins opening up. Uh, so that's a good sign. Our, our thermostat is correctly talking to the unit and asking it to turn on. Uh, so that gives me the sense that I can put everything back together again. I'm going to come back over here and turn it back off first. Again, I like working on the unit when it's off typically. So I turn the mode back to off. If we go back and look at the unit, 
we will see it close back down again. Uh, and again, once that's done, we'll start reassembling it, particularly focusing on trying to put all of the plastic pieces on the right and the top fin back together again. All right, so here's a key that took me a whole day to figure out. This bottom corner of the back here, this just pops right out. There's some little tabs on the top there, and then some other ones over here on the left, and this little corner just comes completely out. And that's how we're gonna deal with the fact that we've still got this long dangling wire with the receiver on it. We're essentially gonna sort of tuck all this up inside there, and we're gonna tuck the receiver right into that spot there on the left. Just gonna, it can sit up there, there's a little cavity there, it's a good little spot to hide it away. Um, and this, again, took me a full day to figure out, and it's a big part of why I made this video. Uh, the wire, as you can see, is much longer than it needs to be. What we're gonna do is we can uh, either tuck it into the wall there or tuck it up behind the unit there. Um, but basically, we're just gonna sort of hide this all back away. And so here I've tucked most of the wire into the wall. Uh, here it is coming out of the cover. It goes into the wall, spend some time curling around in there. I tucked it through these slots here around the bottom of the coolant tube, and then over to where the unit, again, is just sitting right in there uh, very happily. And eventually we'll put that cover corner back on again, uh, but that can pretty much be the very last thing you do. And I think in my shots, you'll see that that's the case. Um, so next we're gonna put the side back on. And this is tricky. I don't think I pulled this off on camera. Uh, this is just sort of, again, very gently getting things lined up making sure that the IC sensor is poking out of the bottom as you slide things in. The top here has just got this little tab. It sort of clicks into place. And um, I didn't get a good shot of this because again, it took me both hands. But again, you're just gonna gently kind of put this back into place. You can see that bottom corner is still missing there. And get things as well aligned as possible here so it all looks nice and flush. Um, I think I successfully did that here. This just shows how again, the top pivots down uh, that'll be the last part you snap on, again, so that the IC feeds up through the hole in the cover there. Again, making sure everything's nice and flush. And at this point, we're kind of put back together, except we need to put those screws back on to hold that in place. Here, I've done that. And then the last thing we need to do is to put that third screw down at the bottom there. We're gonna put that into place, and then we're gonna put the little white cover uh, over top of it again against just a little triangle. The uh, short part goes in the bottom and it just sort of wedges right in there by friction. You kind of put the bottom in then push on the top, clicks back into place, very seamless. Uh, you'll notice in the next couple shots, I actually did this last, so it's missing. All right, so next we need to put the cover back on. Um, this is what that socket looks like. If you remember when we pulled the cover off, it was horizontal we're gonna put it back in kind of exactly reverse. So we're holding it horizontal there, we're holding its little uh, hinge right into place, and it just pushes right into that spot, which holds it into place. Um, another one that was hard to shoot and do at the same time. But we're just gonna press it right there. That just pops into place like a socket. Uh, we're gonna do that on both sides. And once we've done that, oh, now I'm gonna take it back out again here. So just showing you it popping out and popping it back in. It's as easy as that. Do that to both sides. And then you can just flip the hinge down. Well, I gotta do the other side first. Flip the hinge down, snap it on the side, snap it on the other side, and that is back together again. All right, things looking pretty much normal. And I think we're ready to go. Click on mode, turn on to heat, set the temperature if you want to. We can see it turning on there. And I did some more experimenting with this off camera to make sure that everything was working fine. Uh, basically, if the two things are talking to each other, everything really should just work fine. This is just gonna continue going through its power on sequence. So you'll slowly see the uh, fins open back up again. And after this, the only other things we need to do are to replace that corner. You can see it's still open there. Uh, again, you can do that anytime, so it'll be easy for you from now on to pull that receiver out if you need to do that for any reason. Uh, so we'll do that next. And then I'm gonna show you one thing to make sure to do on your remote control. 
All right, so here we are in that corner. Again, it's still open. You can see the receiver tucked up in there, the wire kind of coiling around and tucked into my wall there. We're just gonna put those tabs of the corner right up in there, pop the other tabs up on the other side, and that just snaps right into place. Again, nice and flush on both sides. Never even would have guessed it popped out like that. Again, my motivation for making this video took me forever to find that little spot. All right, and then finally, the remote control, if you've been using it scheduled, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to go in and make sure to turn off that schedule so that the thermostat owns the schedule from now on. So that's on this weekly timer button. You can see that weekly light was on. When I push that button, it goes off. That sort of takes the schedule off the remote or turns it off temporarily. And that's gonna again, give the thermostat control over it. You also see the left and right vein buttons there that I mentioned, the thermostat does not control. And that wraps up my video. I hope that you found it useful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those in the comments below and I will try to respond to them if I am able to. Thanks very much.